Something is always guiding the market. The invisible hand described by Adam Smith is always attached to somebody. What might the global financial recession, the growing Federal Reserve balance sheet, and early Bitcoin adopters have in common? This is the last of a three-part series about Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency that is being figuratively printed from processors around the world. In Chip Wars 15, we reviewed the Great Depression and went over inflation and deflation. In Chip Wars 16, we learned all about how Bitcoin works. Because of currency and exchange risk, it seems that Bitcoin will probably be the most valuable to people who might need to transfer money on a very short and temporary basis. And here's another wrinkle. Depending on how many Bitcoins they still own, early adopters may have an unusual amount of influence over the platform. Let me explain by using the current US economy as an example. The GDP of the US is over $15.5 trillion. The US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, makes up about 20% of that figure. That seems huge. How did that happen? Before the recession, banks mostly controlled the growth of money. If someone wanted to borrow hundreds of thousands of dollars to, let's say, buy a house, the bank gave them the money, and then sold the loan as a security to the market to get back that money. Since the market considered these mortgage-backed securities low risk, and they provided a better return than just holding currency, most institutions demanded more of them, and this basically fueled the housing bubble. Then when the market lost faith in these investments, the smell of deflation sparked the credit crisis. The Fed is the lender of last resort, so it tried to restore confidence by doing what they've always done during a recession, buying safe government securities from the banks. But it was too little too late. Some banks collapsed, and the survivors were so scared they stopped investing, freezing the real economy. The surviving banks believed the safest thing to do was was just hold on to their money. You see, the housing bubble was so big that the Federal Reserve lost its power to convince the market that holding on to currency was a bad decision. So the Federal Reserve took it up a notch by creating over $2 trillion in currency to keep the markets going while the banks hunkered down in fear. Compared to other countries, the US Central Bank was relatively successful. Hence the famous saying on Wall Street, don't fight the Fed. What does this have to do with early adopters of Bitcoin? In the early days, it was extremely easy to earn Bitcoins since few people actually had the faith. But as more and more people heard about it from the media, and videos like this one perhaps, it's getting extremely difficult for the average person to get into the game. Since the supply is fixed, as demand goes up, so does the incentive to hoard bitcoins. This creates a deflationary economy where the best thing to do is nothing. Only buy things that you feel you absolutely need to have. On the other hand, a healthy economy encourages people to invest their energy into making things other people want to buy. And a healthy currency is simply a tool that helps people take risk on something that might be great. Bitcoin seems to be the opposite. A deflationary thing people use to protect themselves from something bad. And as it exists today, it cannot be anything more than a speculative gamble. Are any of you invested in Bitcoin? What are your thoughts about the Bitcoin market lately? Personally, I'm fascinated about what Bitcoin says about the economics of scarcity and how far people are willing to support the Bitcoin market. I understand its utility, but I think there are less risky investments that offer a greater return today. I guess if I had some money I was willing to lose, I might buy a Bitcoin or two. Nah, I think I'll just go to Vegas. Thanks for all your likes and support, and welcome to all the latest subscribers. I always read each and every comment, even if I can't reply right away. Now it's time for us to get ready for the next Xbox and WWDC.